Today we're talking about how to catch a fish with a live worm. This is how most people get started in fishing. This is how I started fishing when I was about six years old and it's still a technique that I use all the time today. So we're gonna go through three different ways to catch a fish with a live worm. The first is using a bobber and a small hook or a small jig. The second is a weightless technique. So we're gonna cast it out there without any weight on it or a bobber. We're just gonna let it sink through the water column until it hits the bottom and see what picks it up and we're going to throw it on the bottom with a sinker. So we'll catch some different kinds of fish with each technique. The bobber is probably going to catch us some panfish, bluegills, uh, crappies, perch, maybe a small bass. The weightless technique and the bottom fishing techniques, they really could catch anything. So let's get started with the bobber technique first. The first thing I'm going to do is put a small hook or jig on. I've got this small tungsten jig. I like to use jigs because they provide a little bit of extra weight for casting. And even if you lose your bait, the fish will sometimes keep biting this little jig head because it looks like food. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put on a bobber. This is a regular old spring bobber. So you just pull this spring down. There's a little notch carved into that post. You run your line through that, let the spring go, and now the bobber is stuck on the line. As far as the knot used to tie this jig head on, it's a fisherman's knot, but you could use any knot. If you don't know how to tie a fisherman's knot, I have a video on how to tie one, so you can check that. I'll leave it up here at the top. And now we just need to put on a tiny piece of worm on the hook. All right, I pinched off most of that worm, so I've just got a little bit left on there. This can easily fit into a bluegill's mouth or a small bass. And what we're gonna do next is look for a piece of structure to cast near. On my left, there's a whole lot of nothing. There are probably fish out there, but it'll be more likely to produce a lot of fish if we find some structure to cast near. So here's a log in front of me. This is obviously the reason why I stopped in this spot. There's a nice log, which I'm pretty sure is gonna hold some panfish. So if we cast our bobber near that structure, there's probably bluegills and perch and crappies hanging around underneath that log or around it, and it should provide us some action with a bobber. So let's cast it out there. And again, we've got about two feet of line out here. We might need more than that, but we're just going to let the bobber sit there until we get a bite. Now, if you don't get a, oh, I actually just had one. If you don't get a bite for a couple of minutes, either recast it or you can twitch the bobber a couple of times and that gets your jig moving a little bit and it gets the fish interested again. They'll come over and check it out. And I'm going to watch for either my bobber to start swimming away or go most of the way under. Now I haven't gotten a fish yet so what I'm going to do, I think it's quite a bit deeper than 20 inches so I'm going to slide this spring bobber up a little bit higher. We're going to go up to maybe three feet or so. and get it back out there in the same area. When you get one, what you want to do is give it a little jerk to set that hook in the fish's mouth. Okay, there we go. So what did I get? A bluegill. This is what you usually catch with this method. Okay, now sometimes you're gonna have your worm still on there. Just use it again. Sometimes you're gonna have to put a new piece of worm on there. Don't be surprised if you lose your worm a few times before you actually catch a fish. Bluegills are really good at pecking that worm off there. Let's move on to the weightless technique and see what we can catch with that. All right, here's our weightless rig. So I took the bobber off. There's no sinker on here, it's just a hook. I switched out the heavier jig head for just a hook and put on a piece of night crawler instead of a leaf worm. So we're gonna chuck this out there and see what happens. We're just gonna let it sink until something picks it up. If it reaches the bottom, then we'll just pop it off the bottom and let it sink again. One thing to keep in mind, if you're using really heavy line, you will not be able to cast a weightless rig very well. There's just too much friction with the thick line and you'll only be able to cast it a few feet. I've got four pound line on here right now so I can cast it a pretty good distance. And what I'm gonna do now is just watch my line on the water and watch for it to either jump on the water or feel a tug on my line. And I'm just gonna let it sink until either it stops, the line stops sinking, or I get a fish. Okay, my line is going out right now. 
There we go. I got something. What is it? I think it's a smallmouth bass. He's trying to get over to that log so he can get me stuck in it. I'm going to tighten up my drag a little bit here. This is really a bluegill rod, so this is a pretty decent fish for this small rod. What is it? Yep, it's a smallmouth. Awesome. Okay, and there's our fish on the weightless rig. First cast. He picked it up right before it hit the bottom, I think. Get him back in the water, and we'll go with the bottom rig and see what we can catch with that. Nice smallmouth. All right, so the last technique is to fish on the bottom with a worm. So I've got the same hook on. I did switch over to a heavier rod because I might catch a big catfish or a carp or something on this one. And I've got a whole night crawler on here, a small one, maybe a four inch one or something. If you've got a really long night crawler, you might want to cut off part of it. You don't want too much hanging off. But these tails hanging off are going to wiggle around down there on the bottom and attract fish to bite. So I'm going to go about eight inches up the line now and put on a split shot sinker. So these just pinch right on your line. Now I'm going to grab a pliers and just tighten that up a little bit. And you can use more weight than this, of course. If you're fishing in heavy current or a really deep spot or something, you might want to put more weight on there. But for right here, I think this will be adequate. And the less weight you use, the less likely it'll be that a fish will feel that weight and drop your bait. So we're all ready to go. I'm going to toss this out there and we'll wait and see what happens. So my line is laying on the surface and all I need to do now is just, I'm going to watch it just keep sinking and sinking and sinking once it hits the bottom. Yep, there it is. The line just dropped back just a little bit so I know it's on the bottom. And I'm just going to put it in my rod holder here and we'll just wait. So what we're watching for now is either my line is going to start shooting out or swimming to the side or the rod's going to start bending. So at this point we just sit and wait and this could be a matter of a few minutes or we might sit here for a half an hour waiting. It all depends on how hot the bite is that day. All right, something's got this one. They took it and swam toward the boat, which made my line drop down. There we go. So as soon as I saw that line start to go forward again, I set the hook. It's a big bluegill. So there you have it. Three ways to catch a fish on a worm. That's a nice one. If you have any thoughts or questions, go ahead and drop those in the comments below. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll catch you next time.